Hello, good afternoon. I uh, hope you're all having a good show so far. My name is Zul Arifin. I am with a company called HTEC, who is the US representative for Spike Chunsoft. So let me begin by introducing uh, Spike Chunsoft. This company was founded by Mr. Koichi Nakamura, the fine gentleman there sitting next to his beautiful wife, Mrs. Nakamura. Um, traditionally, Spike Chunsoft has been a developer of game titles in the Japanese market for the Sony platforms. And now we are putting in great efforts into bringing our titles to the mobile platforms as well. Um, and next to me here is Mitsuhiko Oto. He is the brains behind the sound novel applications, which I am here and very excited to tell you all about it today. Uh, he's also here right next to me just to make sure that I don't screw up. <laughs> so, the sound novel is a unique brand of interactive storytelling. We were the first to introduce this type of media applications over 20 years ago to a niche market, really a, a segment in a niche market in the Japanese gaming industry for the Sony consoles and portables. But now with the unre unrelenting growth of the mobile platforms, the ebook market and the emergence of the casual gamer, we see an industry in a prime condition that can take our kind of immersive gameplay to a broader set of audience. Now, before I get into the details more about sound novels, let's take a quick glance at the markets uh, that we're looking at. So what are the markets we're talking about? Well, first, we believe that the nature of our title's immersive storytelling will appeal to the ebook audience. Now let's take a quick look at the ebook market, where it's at. Hard data facts from the Association of American Publishers have shown that year after year, ebook sales have skyrocketed. In January 2011, publishers sold 70.5 uh, 70 million ebooks. Just one year later, publishers sold a whopping 122.1 million titles and it just keeps growing by the day. So there's no denying here uh, that the ebook marketplace has been nothing short of phenomenal. Just in the US alone, it is currently a near $2 billion industry forecasted to exceed 5 billion by 2016. Thanks to the proliferation of mobile platforms like e-readers, tablets, and smartphones, the explosive popularity of ebook is now raising questions over what exactly it will look like in the future since digital formats allow authors and artists to offer much more than what, is, what was possible with a printed page. Social and interactive experiences within the ebook can include not only text, but also audio, video, and an added dimension of interactivity. The combination of all these elements will have a direct effect on the evolution of the overall ebook market, which is already happening today. And this is where we come in. Our sound novel is exactly one of those new breed of media that offers new experiences to ebook readership. Okay, so the other marketplace is, of course, the game market. Up until now, this is the market that we've been selling our titles to in Japan. When it's all said and done, we are a traditional game developer who has produced more than 200 titles for the industry over the course of 20 plus years. As we all know, the industry has, has seen incredible growth that, uh, that was accompanied with huge, fast, and complicated changes that, for the better or worse, affected everyone in it. What's undeniable is that the universe of gaming has expanded, deepened, and frankly, gotten quite chaotic for a lot of us. But if you rise above the arena and see things from a stripped down perspective, you can see a market line being drawn between two types of gaming. Uh, on the one hand, 
you have the arena that catered to a strong market core of traditional diehard gamers who wouldn't wait a second to buy the next release of Halo uh, or Diablo. Um, on the other, there has been an exp explosive growth in casual gaming, of course. From Bejeweled to Angry Birds to Farmville, casual gaming has attracted not only the hardcore and traditional gamers, but also won the hearts of a broader set of audience who are drawn to the limited complexity of the gaming experience, impromptu play sessions, and the accessible nature of the game itself. I believe we're all here to capitalize on that momentum that is further fueled by the social aspect that is intertwined and growing in both markets. So from the casual, casual gamer's uh, viewpoint, they will be drawn to our sound novels, user-friendly nature, and easy accessibility, easy accessibility of the, uh, of the gameplay. Now the sound novel's combination of novelistic storytelling and casual gameplay makes it a perfect media entity that can find a home in both marketplaces of ebook and the gaming world. So uh, we're here to introduce and share our vision of Sound Novel. So it is part ebook that draws the audience into an immersive, compelling storyline that also integrates graphics and audio to enhance the experience. Furthermore, it is also a game because it engages the reader into making pivotal decisions that will affect the course and the outcome of the story. Now, the concept of interactive novel isn't exactly new. Maybe some of you can recall or even read them when you were younger, but back in the days, there were these series of playbooks called Choose Your Own Adventure. I don't know how many of you guys remember that. Um, but they were very, very popular among children and young adults. If you've never read them, let me briefly explain. It's basically a work of fiction that allows the reader to participate in the story by making effective choices that alter the course and the co conclusion of the story. It's all text-based, of course, and you have to flip through and jump to different areas of the book as you go along with the story. Okay, so it might be interesting to know that it might be interesting to know that Choose Your Adventure game books sold over 250 million copies from the late 70s to the 90s. I'm going to say it again, 250 million copies. So there is a definite appeal to the concept of game books. Now, our sound novel revived that same game book excitement into the digital world. We think the markets are at a converging point where such interactive reading can be embraced by a new audience at a point where readership is all time high, especially in this country. For readers, the sound novel adds graphics, audio, and interactivity to further enrich the experience of the story. For the casual gamers, it allows them to enjoy an adventure without the sensory overload and the high learning curve of a typical game of high budget production. We also believe that our sound novel type of applications may very, very well serve as a media bridge that will draw readers into the gaming world and gamers into the ebook market as well. So in that sense, it is a win-win media that embraces the current and emerging markets. So without further ado, the next thing I'd like to show you is a trailer preview of one of our titles, The Night of the Kamaitachi, which is a murder mystery story.
So that's just one example of our sound novel. Our titles cover a wide range of genres, from mystery to suspense and from horror to drama. So let me give you a few examples of our published titles and how well it did in Japan. Otoguri So has, has seen 400,000 uh, 400, units of sales. The preview you just saw was one of the edition of the Kamaitachi murder mystery series. It is by far one of our more successful line of titles with a combined sales of, of over 2 million units. Machi has sold 250 units, 250,000 units. Imabikiso has sold 80,000 units. 40, 428 is a joint publishing project with Sony Computer Entertainment Japan. It is a drama title that sold 220,000 units with 40,000 download sales. Uh, keep in mind that the titles have been available to, to have, been, have only been available to Sony's gaming platforms. These numbers are just a, is possibly just a small sampling of what the potential could be if we were to bring this, these titles to a much larger market. Bless you. Uh, so now I'm gonna shift gears a bit and we'll try to illustrate the many variants of gameplay that sound novels can offer. For one, they're not one dimensional. Each story offers its own unique flavor of play. So let me try to show you what we mean. Because each plot or each story can take on a different nature of play, the combination of the type of story and interactivity adheres to its own unique chart structure. It is the combination of the story and the chart type that ultimately defines the overall sound novel experience. So here's a few examples. First, we have what we call the standard flow. This is a standard flow chart that works very well with your typical murder mystery type of stories. Our title, Night of the Kamaitachi, is based on the standard flow. In this type of chart, the decision you make in the early part of the story becomes a pivotal point that can lead you to whether or not you can solve the crime. At any one decision point, it can also lead to another chart, and thus it can lead the reader to different conclusive scenarios as well. Stories like the usual suspects and then there were none will work extremely well with this type of flow chart. Next, we have what we call the matrix chart. This type of chart offers the readers many decision points within the story. Because of the interconnectedness of the matrix, it can lead the reader to a range of scenarios and predicaments while allowing the reader to backtrack as well. In essence, the matrix offers many different twists and turns that will further immerse the reader deeper into the story. Each reading or gameplay will offer a different experience to the story that will lead to many possible ending scenarios. The matrix flowchart works best for horror or any stories that are maze-like in nature with lots of twists and turns, such as the Cube and the Blair Witch Project. So now, we also have sound novels that use a time-based flowchart system. These stories all have the concluding scenarios, but they are all time-sensitive and intensive. Our titles, 428 and Machi, for example, use this type of chart. What's unique about the time-based sound system is that it engages the reader to control multiple characters. Each character, offers a different perspective and chain of events to the story. The characters can also interact and cross over to, other, to each other's incidences and events. Depending on the decision you make for the character, you can save a life or result in the death of others as the story moves along. The time-based chart is best suited for time-intensive dramas, thrillers, and stories. So plots like 24 and Vantage Point are two examples that will, work, that will work best with this type of chart system. Now, we have developed a unique style that's very different from what we've shown you so far. One such title is called Trick Logic, published by Sony, that uses what we call the inference style. This is a sound novel that is read, th read through linearly like any other novels. It doesn't have any decision points, except at the end, 
when you are put to the challenge to piece the facts and evidences together to solve the case. So there is an interactive element in that you must tag facts and events as you read along. If how, if how you piece the evidence is wrong, then you will not find out who the perpetrator is. The inference style allows for the creation of stories that will appeal to readers who love crime solving or readers who are forensic enthusiasts. So there we go, kids. Now that you have a better idea of what we're doing, we are very happy to tell you that we are currently working on our first US sound novel release, Night of the Kamaitachi, to the iOS and Android platforms. Uh, keep in mind that this is work in progress. The final version may have a completely different name. Nonetheless, we hope to bring this title to market by the end of the year. Other titles are, of course, in the works and will follow. Ultimately, we hope by speaking here, this, speaking here this afternoon, we're able to share with you a pretty cool, straightforward idea that is simple to understand, yet an idea with potentials to flourish in the emerging markets, and converging markets, as a matter of fact. In the long run, we hope our work will transcend to new experiences for ebook readers, offer a new style of gameplay for casual gamers, and open new doors of opportunity for all. So in the line with the show's name, Casual Connect, we are truly looking forward to connect uh, with any one of you who are interested in what we're doing. We are specifically looking for partners who can help us bring our titles to a broader audience, and we are also looking for help in having our titles available in Chinese, Russian, French, and other languages. Uh, thank you very much for being here, my dear colleagues, and have a great rest of the show. I'd like to, I'd like to open the uh, floor up for questions. Uh, I see one over there and then one over, one over here. Oh, here comes the microphone. <laughs> Hi, uh, since the, uh, the series is called Sound Novel, uh, what part does sound play in, in the gameplay? Well, Sound Novel is a brand that was, uh, that was developed in Japan. We might actually ultimately not use that word Sound Novel. We're just using it because this, that's the brand that we, we created over the years. And that's in Japan, if you say Sound Novel, people will know exactly what we're, you know, what we're talking about. Over there. Right, we, we have a question in the front and a question in the back. I think this is an incredibly fascinating idea that it's a crossover between a book and a game. And it, I think it's absolutely brilliant. The, my question is, how do you market it? Do you market it as a game or do you market it as a book? Would it show up in your ebook reader or as a standalone application? And how would it be categorized in the app store for people to discover it? Yeah, that's a little tricky because this, the nature of our title do cross over to both platforms. But we would like to market it. Marketing to ebook no We would like to market it to both markets. So, so for the gaming market, we'll market it as an interactive adventure story, and for the ebook, we'll market, we'll try to market it as, uh, you know, interactive ebook. You know, something that's different. So, uh, as a fan of uh, Choose Your Own Adventure Stories back in the day, um, it, this is fascinating, and I think this is something that will appeal to um, casual game players, honestly. Uh, my question for you, though, is what, what's the duration of your development cycle, specifically uh, the QA portion of it, because I can see some huge headaches for QA teams uh, to to uh, test all the various scenarios that could arise. Okay, Mr. I know. Can I have a little bit? Eh, to, I have 
QA、QA とか QA、QA の QA の込みでえっ、ー、と今作ってるんですけど、大体半年くらいですね。半年、あのこれは日本、まあ今ファーストタイトルなので、その後は短くなる。So this is in working on our first title, we're projecting about six months, but I think the more we do it, I think the quicker we can get it onto the market. So yes, six months. I, you know, we we're a company about 250 people and have some resources to help us out. So. But yeah. So, a question、uh, What's the typical over here?、Uh, typical length of play for, the ti for your titles? Smart you are, really. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, on the average, if you just go through it, about one, one story scenario could be like three hours, you know, if you're a pretty good reader. But it depends really on the scenario and the sound novel, you know. So, like, yeah, so, I mean, there are titles that could take you more than 10 hours, like Matrix. Yeah, so, you know,、uh, we're trying to cater to the, you know, young adults, to the adults, and, you know, pull them into an immersive storyline. So, yeah, it ranges really, I mean, anywhere from a few hours to maybe 10, 12 hours of, per play. Of course, each time you read, you know, it could immerse, you, you, will different, you can experience a different story. So,、uh, yeah, that's my answer. We have time for a couple more questions.、Uh, anybody out there? Nope. Nope. All right, well, in that case, please give a round of applause to Spike Chunsa. Thank you. Thank you.